because I can read now. Hello, everyone. Hello. Okay. I might need the three of A wealthy nobleman stands upon the battlements of his castle, looking out upon the mountainous vista before him. The sun is setting, gilding the scene with glorious light. That was the back of the two of wands, or the front. That was the front of the two of wands. I'm using the vice versa because it's like one of my favorite decks that I wasn't using because I couldn't really read the book. And now I can read the book. Uh, I want to use it. <laughs> it's kind of simple. Um, just trying to see, though, if I want to switch over to a different pair of reading glasses. But I think these will be fine. So let's get into this. Who is it? Today is 111. And usually, um, not usually, sometimes people be like, oh, you know, when it comes to repeating numbers, it's a portal. I haven't seen too, too much about 111, but I got an unexpected phone call today uh, offering an opportunity that was completely unexpected. I guess I just thought I would be more proactive or that it would be something that I initiate more than something that just comes <laughs> to me, but not complaining, of course. <laughs> just, it took me by surprise. <laughs> I was so shocked. Um, and then I saw uh, just on Facebook, someone said that there's a three planet conjunction Today, it's 111, something about effortless manifestation and things like that. And I guess it really, um, let me see if I can find it real quick. Because I'm assuming the planets would be what Mercury, Jupiter, and Saturn and Aquarius, maybe. Oh, come on. Oh, snap. Oh, wow. And my friend just had his baby. <laughs> oh, he's funny. He's a joker. All right. Let's see. Let's see it. The rare triple planet conjunction during the 111 portal on January 11th, 2021, is a sensitive time of easy manifestation. So if you focus on bad, bad will amplify. Focus on miracles, miracles will amplify. So turn off the news and discover page, then focus on love and healing for best results. Now, of course, I'm just now seeing that. Not of course, but I'm just now seeing that this call came out of the blue earlier today. Um, and it's... I guess, an active manifestation of mine. Is that the hangman? With the Wheel of Fortune. And the High Priestess behind it. And the Moon card. Followed by the Four of Cups. Now this is the back of the moon. So it's actually an eclipse instead of a moon. Which is interesting. I guess it's a new moon. Uh, solar eclipse. The high priestess, the will of fortune, the hangman. Both the high priestess and the hangman have an energy of a knowing. With the hangman, it's just uh, not necessarily apparent and obvious on the outside. This is what we're going to do. We're going to clarify these, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of watery energy. Uh, we got the moon with the high priestess, Pisces with the moon, also kind of Pisces with the hangman, also kind of Pisces with the high priestess, and then the will of fortune, which is Jupiter. So, some more Pisces. Uh, lots of Piscean energy, Jupiterian, Neptunian. Jupiter is in Aquarius, Neptune is in Pisces. In a few years, or maybe not even that long, because I don't know if Jupiter is going to retrograde in Aquarius like it did in Capricorn. 
but we're going to be having a Jupiter Neptune conjunction in Pisces. So both of Pisces's rulers will be conjuncting in its sign. So that'll be interesting, especially for how people talk about Neptune. A lot of people, it seems, but with Jupiter there, maybe that's really an opportunity or it's going to be an opportunity to make it a reality instead of it just being a fantasy. But I guess, well, Jupiter could make it more immersive. It's how you look at it, I guess. I don't know. I don't even know what I'm doing today. I was just like, oh my gosh, I can use the vice versa now that I can read the book. And so that's why I pulled them out. So I'll give this one more and then cut. Oops. See, if these weren't double sided, I would have taken those, but they aren't, so. Okay. And then let's do one more. But yeah, um, so the opportunity, Clorinda, hello, hi, how are you? Hi, Clorinda. I don't know what accent that was. How are you doing? I hope you're well. But yeah, I was just like, oh my gosh, that's the Six of Pentacles I, on the High Priestess. Okay. All right, this is actually, so the Lovers, the Six of Pentacles and the Four of Wands, also with the Tower card here. That's interesting. There's lots of, it feels like complementary or similar energies or not too far off energy here. Uh, but anyway, the phone call I wasn't expecting, it's an opportunity. I was just like, oh, wait. There's a follow up call tomorrow morning. And I mean, there are some things that I guess I've been like, I want and that I've been manifesting. I guess I didn't necessarily expect for it to just happen. <laughs> but it didn't just happen. And that's the thing. Glad to hear it. I'm amazing, Clorinda. I have absolutely no complaints. Um, I'm gorgeous. I am blessed. I'm loving life and loving the process. Um, but that that it, it takes me back to that positionality again and positioning because there are some things I procrastinate procrastinate less now. And there's something, it's like I clipped it and I've been waiting to sort of visit it and approach it later. Yesterday, or the day before yesterday, I went ahead and I followed through with the thing. And when I followed through with one thing, it set me up on like two additional paths. Also, it gave me a resource that I didn't think I needed, only to find out that I do. Now, is this a resource that's trying to sell itself? Maybe, potentially, maybe not. It's uh, a good, it's a different way to look at things that I wasn't necessarily taking. Uh, and then I was like, wow, I was feeling kind of sort of uh, shook a little bit because I thought it was solid. Turns out it wasn't. But then I get a phone call of someone who saw that very thing. So I'm like, huh. It's like, okay, all right. And it's, it's that, like, we do what we have to. We do what we're guided and directed to. And then there are other pieces that are moving in the ethers and the physical in ways that are not yet connected, but that align. And, yeah, it's just, it's, it's crazy how that just sort of happened. I'm like, oh, wow, I was not expecting that. <laughs> And I just talked to my friend. I'm like, this is like legit, right? Like, like this is normal, right? I mean, it, it's like, you know, if you put something out there and somebody follows up on it, like, isn't that the point of all these things in the first place? And it's like, yeah. So I get one more. Let's just do two. Little cut. Oh, I've been seeing that world card a lot too. This is interesting because everyone has their back to the card or to the camera, except this Nine of Swords person. 
<laughs> and the Nine of Swords is under the Hangman. So, uh, then there is this side. Is this this side or that side? This is that side. We have that side, the back side of the sun. I see the back side of the sun card a lot. And there are those two like guardians back off in the distance. There's a white obelisk tower. And the high priestess usually has two towers. I guess one of the sun, one of the moon. Well, this is the sun moon. In this last row, let's see if there's a theme. It's the back of the Five of Cups, the front of the Nine of Swords, the back of the Knave of Swords, and the back of the World card. I don't know if there's necessarily a consensus thing here, but I'm just going to run through these. I don't know what this is. I'm just pulling cards and going with it. If it resonates, take what resonates. If it doesn't resonate, um, don't take it. <laughs> This hangman, four of wands, nine of swords is interesting. I don't want to do this. And I have the book. I want to use the book. Because that's why I pulled it out. Because so, I can read it. There's all majors in this pile. Or in this column. The moon, the lovers, and the world. Across the top, the moon, the high priestess, the Wheel of Fortune, and the Hangman. I keep wanting to say Hierophant for some reason. The Tower is also here. And there are no... Oh, the Knave of Swords is the only court card. So the cards whose back we see... The High Priestess, the Lovers, the Six of Pentacles, the Five of Cups, the Knave of Swords, and the World. The ones facing the front, the Moon, even though it's the back side of the Moon card, I believe. The Wheel of Fortune, the Hangman, the Four of Wands. I don't know if this is the front or the back. This is the back. Yeah, these are their backs. Oops. Uh, Hangman, Nine of Swords. And then the tower doesn't really have a... Well, the skull side frontwards, so maybe the tower... Oh, there are two sphinxes in the bottom of the tower, so they're facing front. And so there are these elements. First of all, there are elements that we don't know with the moon and also with the high priestess. What this, there's almost a feeling here of something coming to pass. Like something that we knew about. Something that we knew would happen or we had a feeling that it would happen. And now it's starting to come to pass. It's starting to come to the light. It's starting to play out. Now, there is a feeling of maybe not having done whatever it is that we could have done in the moment that we knew we should have been doing it or that we got the feeling to do it. Blooming Rose. Is it to me? Is it the door? What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> Hey, how you doing, Blooming Rose? I hope you're well. I guess I should just leave it at how you doing. Um, yeah, because and it's like this high priestess in revert or the back of the high priestess and the will of fortune. Like this high priestess is like we already knew, and now it's coming to pass. I don't know, this is weird. Not weird, but interesting. But again, like with the hangman, 
back of the four of wands and the nine of swords, it feels like we didn't do whatever it is that we could have done when we could have done it. Back of the lovers, I feel like that adds to this sort of indecision that the hangman energy can have. And then we have the eclipse here in the moon card. Now we had two eclipses, two solar eclipses in 2020. One of them at the start of cancer season, the other one in Gemini. <laughs> Gemini, Sagittarius season. So it wasn't quite Cancer Capricorn. We had two new moons in Cancer and one full moon in Cancer. That was the last full moon of the year. And from June to December, <laughs> things progressed a lot of ways. Also, this tower is calling my attention because it doesn't feel like there, it feels like there's an energy of a dud here too. Because it's like this tower is being stricken, but it doesn't really look like it's caused too much damage or that it's shaking up things too much. Also though, we do have the two sphinxes there now, the sphinxes are bare-chested. They ain't got no top zone. Just like this eclipse, the woman rising out of this pool of water. I guess there's also four cards that show... Uh, like a nude figure, I guess. I don't know if you call a sphinx a figure, but <laughs> it feels a little anticlimactic. And maybe that's why this Five of Cups is down here. Maybe we thought that something more was going to happen than what actually happened. And it's leaving us a little disappointed. It feels like also with this high priestess, maybe we were called to do something that we didn't want to do. With the back of the Six of Pentacles, it could have been a price that we didn't want to pay. We could have had to sacrifice, or maybe we were called to sacrifice or give up or do something that we didn't want to have to do. And so now with the back of the page of swords, Knave of Swords, like on the front, it's pretty clear. On the back, it's stormy. And so it's like now we have to kind of sort of look at the ruin of what isn't maybe from this point in position now realizing what could have been. It's almost like that um, when it comes to the new year and maybe you had a new year's resolution last year to like, go to the gym more or something. Now, last year was last year, so this is just an example. Or to eat better, to eat healthier. And like in the moment, it was like, wow, this sucks. I'm not going to do this. It was like, oh, I'll do a, I'll, I'll take a rest day. And then a rest day becomes a rest week, becomes a rest month, becomes a rest year. But then when the next year comes, or as you get to the end of that year, it's like, wow, if I would have like did it when I started to do it, then my results would have been like out of this world. Like I would have had a whole year down. Not only would it be easier to continue to have it now rather than trying to start it now, but also I would have had some result. And it's not necessarily in the space of a new year's resolution. It feels like something that personally, it's something that ultimately feels like it was a restriction. And then over here, with the moon, the lovers, and the world, this is the back of all of these cards. And again, it's like we have this eclipse energy. Now, an eclipse is something that felt like a sun 
or something that should have been a sun, but it isn't. It's eclipsed by the moon. So all this could have been something like emotional, maybe even spiritually, something that we were felt, feeling led to do or to bring resolution to, but we didn't. And I feel like the indecision is carrying through here. Looking at the silver urn or the golden urn, Mercury is in the heart of this. Mercury being a planet of communication, but also Mercury being the messenger god. So the planet that runs between other planets. And Mercury is interesting because it's like more or less it sees all of the planets just like the sun does. So it'll conjunct most of the planets at least one time in a year because the sun will move through all of the suns. Just like the sun will probably conjunct a lot of the planets within the year. And the sun conjuncts Mercury like all the time because it just like, it goes back and forth within that one sign sort of orbit And with the back of the world card, here again, we have these two flames, but they're not as big as they should have been. Like we got two candles instead of two braziers or whatever. And also in this card, one of these is on fire and the other one isn't. So here, with the Six of Pentacles looking out and the Knave of Swords also looking out, it feels like that energy of like waiting for some kind of physical confirmation waiting on some kind of validation outside before we do what it is that we know we need to do. But it's like the trick is you don't get the confirmation and validation until you like do the thing. Like you're not going to get a confirmation for your order before you place the order. If you don't get a confirmation email, that's probably a clue that the order didn't go through. Like I, I remember one night I was starving and I ordered some food pretty close to close. I waited for like an hour. My food didn't show up. And then I opened my laptop and I didn't confirm the order. And then they were closed. <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't get any food that night. Um, and, but by that time I was like, well, I'm going to bed now anyway. So I probably shouldn't eat right before I go to sleep. But it was like waiting to give, but what you give sets the whole thing in motion. That's why we have this like this dud energy and this five of cups. And with the four of wands and nine of swords. I don't want to say that could have been the trap, but with the hangman up here, it's like thinking about and fantasizing about maybe having this thing, but again, not really doing anything to get it. And everything that you needed to do to get it, you knew with this high priestess, with the back of the high priestess, like the information was already given to you. And that's why at the beginning of 2020, I remember it was that feeling of like spirit going quiet, but throughout the course of the year, it's like every time I talk to somebody, even in my personal life, even with things like not even exactly tied to spirituality, there were things that people wanted to do in their personal lives or questions that people had in their personal lives of what they could do. And like everyone already knew what it was, or at least everyone I talked to, they already knew what it was. Sometimes we need validation. That's understandable. But we got to move at some point. There could also be a lack of dedication with the back of the levers and the back of the world card. 
Like maybe we started it, but we didn't see it through. And it's like, because we didn't see it through, we don't have the perspective that we could have had to, hey Zelda, how you been? How you doing? We don't have the perspective that we could have had to not be trapped by the situation. Right? Like if it was the front, then that could have been a Ten of Swords. That it, It's probably a difficult realization, but once we get that information, once we take it in, then we can move on. It's like sometimes it's more painful to know or we're afraid of what the answer might be, so we never ask, but it keeps us in spaces and places that aren't going to bear fruit. And maybe they don't bear fruit because that conversation never happens. Maybe it could have worked out. But without that communication, it's like both of them are staring at the the urns and the mercury, but like no one's actually talking. At least here on the front side, you know, we see them holding hands, looking at each other, blessed by, you know, the angel up there on the back. I guess they're still holding hands, but... I don't know, one of fire, one of water. It's the, the emotions and the feelings against the sight and the action and the passion. I don't know. That's interesting. Which one of these? I want to read this tower card. And it's the back of the tower, too. Oh, that's not the tower. That's the devil. Here is the tower. The tower, that side. So, oh, wait, let me hold it. <laughs> oh, snap. I am doing amazing, Zelda. How are you doing? Things are... Got to do a spot of shopping. Okay. Enjoy, Clarinda. I was in the store earlier for way too long. <laughs> I was like, I'm ready to go. Looking at the tower from the other side, as the lightning strikes, hold up, wait, there we go. As the lightning strikes, we see that it is only a facade. Oof. I'm going to have to position this so I can actually read it. It is only a facade in any case, an, emer an empty shell, sorry. The two sphinxes of the chariot, Major Arcana 7, swim away from the disaster, and the chariot is wrecked upon the rocks. Oof. Each Sphinx is going in her own direction now, for there is no power of will to direct them. A great mask of vanity and delusion cracks. Okay, I'm going to switch to the to my other glasses because this is so much deeper than I thought it was. <laughs> Man. There's like, yeah, there's no will to unite these anymore. They're going off in their own separate directions. There we go. There we go. I should have just put these on in the first place. I'll start from the top. Looking at the tower from the other side as the lightning strikes, we see that it is only a facade in any case, an empty shell. The two sphinxes of the chariot, Major Arcana 7, swim away from the disaster and the chariot is wrecked upon the rocks. Each sphinx is going in her own direction now, for there is no power of will to direct them. A great mask of vanity and delusion cracks and hangs precariously at the top of the tower. From the chaotic pile of rubble grows one small green tree. We've seen the broken mask before, behind the gallows of the hanged man, Major Arcana 12, and here are the sphinxes from the chariot. How did they get to the tower? Sit in the middle of its lonely. How did they get to the tower? Sit in the middle of its lonely sea. Look back over the events and choices that have led you to your present situation. Did you listen to your own inner guidance, or did you thunder along the wrong road, obvious, no, oblivious to your destination? There is nothing for you here, but you can learn from your errors. Well, that's pretty much what I was saying. <laughs> so, love that little bit of confirmation. 
You bought a shirt today and you can't find it. That is so weird. I mean, where could you have put it in the day that you bought it? Sometimes I'll buy stuff and I'll leave the bags at the this, at this store. <laughs> yeah. I don't see a mask here, though. It must be on the other side. Oh, I don't see the mask here either. Wait, where's the mask? I see this. Oh, it's on the ground. It's down there. I was like, I see the snake on the other side. Facades, vanity, delusion. And maybe that's what this Nine of Swords is. Maybe this is uh, an image that we tried to keep up while things were dying and decaying on the inside. I'm going to lose these glasses. It's got to be in the car. Well, hopefully you find it. <laughs> no problems on it. And I don't know, you know, I've, I feel like I've done my best basically all year to be like, whatever, you know, you need to do, do it. Because when the wheels start moving and it was like February, it was like, if we don't get where it is that we want to be, like something's going to play out in a way that we're going, we're going to know that we were either the ones in the way or that because we got out of the way it came to a completion and we get the favorable result. If not, it's like there's no one else to blame. Just give me the boy. <laughs> Back to Into the Woods. You're so nice. You're not good. You're not bad. You're just nice. I'm not nice. I'm not good. I'm just right. Let's see what else is there. What else is there? Ooh, that's rough. And again, with that Knave of Swords, it's almost like, you know, we didn't really know better, but that's what the High Priestess energy is there for, to tell you better. So we don't really have that excuse, unfortunately. I just want, let's see. Let's do maybe something a little different. I was going to do piles, but piles with these are not great. <laughs> There's no backside. That's fine. I guess I could always flip them over. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Work. Top of the deck is the Seven of Swords, the back of the Seven of Swords. Bottom of the deck is the Queen of Wands. I don't see her too often. I don't see her too often. Now, the Queen of Wands... <laughs> is an energy almost like a magician energy. It's one that creates with the natural world. And if you think about it, it kind of makes sense because the Queen of Wands, there's a fire energy there. The sun is a fire energy and plants grow towards the light. And so her magic, her cooperation with the forces of nature comes through the space of her life. But with the back of the Seven of the Swords on the top, there's a, a skull here. There's some swords here. Almost like some kind of Grave Robin type of energy. I don't know. We'll see. Now, the back of the Queen of Cups is here. Clarified by the back of the knight. No, 
the Page of Cups, the Back of Strength, and the Four of Swords. This is interesting because I actually saw that in the book when I was opening it. Because I saw the devil and then I saw this and I was like, wait, I know that there are two devil cards. <laughs> I've actually seen the Back of Strength before. And the last time I saw the Back of Strength, this was us needing to face whatever we need to face. Almost without, it felt like it was without the divine, but it wasn't. I mean, I feel like this pretty much clarifies everything I was just saying. Here's a page. I feel like the back of the queen is shown because this page, this knave, didn't have the strength to do whatever it needed to do to become a realized queen of cups. It chose to rest instead. But this is understandable. Like the four of swords comes between the three and the five. And I mean, after the three of swords, you can't blame or fault anybody for not wanting to get into another battle with the five especially one that doesn't necessarily feel like it had to be fought. Because a lot of times the Five of Swords, it's, it's an empty victory. But the Five of Swords was a card that came out uh, at some point. And it started to take this energy of things that felt like they didn't need to... Thank you, Zelda. I appreciate it. It felt like things that... like. It read like things that felt like they didn't need to be done, but they did. And it also read like things that the divine were kind of sort of challenging us to do, maybe through the space of not being as proactive to help us as they usually were. But it was a time and an opportunity to really come into our own. Because everything we need, we have within us. It's that spark of the creator the image of God that we're all made in. It feels like it was an opportunity to activate that in a way that's more practical. And it's more practical because it's more integrated into the day-to-day -day life in general, instead of being like relegated to a uh, moon cycle or a transit or uh, an altar or whatever. Like it's going from separated, segregated time to a presence that we're just like in. And I mean, last year was probably one of the most, like if you made it, if you were fortunate enough to make it here to watch this and to listen to this, then you already succeeded because last year was that year. But there was still an opportunity to do more. And you don't have to. Nobody has to. And I don't think... Whatever this could have been is necessarily like irretrievably lost. It's like it, it's just easier when you practice. It's easier to do it when it's not as challenging and difficult if you've already done it like on level 100 like on maximum difficulty, beyond maximum difficulty. If you did it and mastered it in that space, then it's like you should be pretty good and pretty solid. And it was just an opportunity for that. Anything that was available can still be made available. Potentially. Because again, at the bottom of the deck is the Queen of Wands, whose light is the thing that attracts the natural forces of the world and whose light encourages them to bloom and blossom and grow and to flourish into that abundance that queens have.
It also does, though, feel like a bit, a piece of this, a bit of it, is intentional. Almost to, like, motivate you to do whatever you need to do now. It's almost like, it's not necessarily setting someone up for failure, but it's almost like getting exposure to something before you're prepared to handle it. It's like if you took a class and on the first day of the class, oh, I've done that before. It's like taking a pretest. So you take a pretest and then you learn the material and then you take another test. Now, the second test is graded on a standalone, but you also get bonus credit for the things that you missed on the pretest that you have now. Now, some people, if they know that that's how it's set up, may intentionally do worse on the pretest to have those bonus points later. And it reminds me of classes, it was like, um, if you scored less than like a 90%, then you had the opportunity to retake the test. And it was like, you know, for the people who got like a 92 or a 93, but wanted a 97 or 98, it's like, they don't get to retake the test, but it's like, you already passed the test. So like, there's no need for you to do this. That's kind of like, this is pre-test, post-test energy. Because it's like before, you didn't necessarily know that it wasn't going to result in what you wanted. Maybe you thought it did. <laughs> Maybe there's a lot of pre-test, post-test energy right now. Maybe a lot of people were led to believe a lot of things over the course of the past year. And so they made choices and decisions and acted in alignment with what they knew at the time only to discover, hey, maybe I didn't necessarily have the whole picture and maybe someone or something did take advantage of my naivete and my willingness to just sort of, I don't know, to go along with it. But it's like, now that you know better, you're gonna do something different. And it's almost, almost like that Uranus and Taurus energy that I was kind of sort of feeling. That'll like let you experience how bad it is. And then it'll be like, so you're not going to do that again, are you? And you're like, oh no, <laughs> never again, not going to do that. Now over here, the seven of pentacles, what's that? The six of cups, the five of pentacles and temperance. The back of temperance. I look like we get some the back of the angel. Oh look, there's the lion and the eagle. I've seen these two before too. But since it's the back of temperance, we actually see the front of the lion instead of the back of the lion in the strength card. But also now it's like the angel and the lion are going their separate ways. They're facing opposite directions. The Seven of Pentacles is the space of something that we attend to. Something we cultivate, something that we nurture. <laughs> Hold up, wait, where is it? It's here. Oh, with the death card. The back of the death card is behind the Seven of uh, Swords, which is awesome. Both of these cards feature a skull. You see the skull right here next to the base of the tree? Like barely see the skull, the top of the skull peeking out? Well, here's the skull over here, which was that like that grave body type of energy. And then the death card is behind it. But in this death card, with the back of the death card, it's like they're already dead. And then it's the six of cups with the five of pentacles. 
six and five is an 11, an 11 between water and earth. That's more water dominant. We see one person on land, one person in the water, like little mermaid vibes. I don't think mermaids need cups. And then in the Five of Pentacles, yeah, the Five of Pentacles is the same on both sides, but one is a person in the space of affluence and the other side is the beggar. It came out beggar side up. This could have been a change in fortune. Right? He starts off as that well-dressed man and then ends up as the person sort of rolling the dice. And rolling the dice is like taking our chances instead of going for the sure thing. The sure thing is spirit, by the way. In the long run, especially. <laughs> In the moment, sometimes we go with what we're comfortable with. What is this? <laughs> it's fine. So the foundation upon which we were building something was already rotten. With that skull in the ground. But the skull is on the other side of the tree. So we never, we never see that it's already dead. Or we never see that it was never going to bear fruit. Maybe there needed to be an element of space here. And the element of space would have given a fungus, a buzzard, any other kind of decomposer, the time to come into this space of what had died and to basically turn it into fertilizer. And once it's made into fertilizer, then we can go back into that situation and we can try to plant something new. But if you try to do it too quickly, then it's like the ground hasn't yet recovered what was taken from it the first time. And maybe that's what this is here. With the Six of Cups, it's this longing for something of the past, longing for a previous comfort. But again, the space, like that death process hasn't yet completed. That's why we see the back of the death card. While they're still dead, and they have their offerings that they're going to present to the Reaper to bring them back to life, to prove that they're ready for the next cycle and the next phase. But this hasn't happened yet. And that's why the Seven of Swords is here. Because before that death process has an opportunity to do everything that it needs, we kind of sort of come in, stop it midway by trying to plant something else. And maybe in the beginning it pays off a little bit. Because he's got seven pinnacles like still on the tree, right? So it's not completely dead. <laughs> it's not going to give him much more than that either. <laughs> and that's the back of this temperance, I guess. It's an energy of impatience. There's a Scorpio and a Leo energy here with the eagle and the lion. What would I say temperance is? I'd say temperance is probably Libra. I could see temperance being Libra. Because, you know, that justice element. Balance. I would say that, like, Sagittarius, for me personally, is, like, Hierophant energy. But anyway. Yeah, let me see. I did want to pull some energy oracle cards. 
notes. So I'll put those on top of this. And then I think I'll shut this down there or here or there after I put these down. Because again, it feels like with the pre-test, post-test energy, if we didn't do it the first time, there's an opportunity to do it right or to correct. And because we're handling it better or handling it different than we did the first time, then it's like that's, that's that bonus. Those are those bonus points, that extra credit, because that's how you sort of gauge improvement. And so, you know, sometimes you got to be <laughs> extra thankful um, whenever you're in a situation and somebody steps up to address things that would have gone unaddressed in the past because it could have been a repeat situation. Or that's something to be thankful for. I mean, why would? Maybe you bring it up or maybe someone else will bring it up to give you the opportunity to address something that needs to be addressed. Because if not addressed, if nothing is done differently, there's gonna be a repeat situation here. And then it's like, oh, you missed it the first time and the second time. And the pre-test and the post-test are like pretty similar. And you you still have the pre-test to study from when you take the post-test. So it's like, like you knew the material that would be on here. You've done it once. You could have been more prepared. I don't know if that, I don't think the post-test is necessarily happening. We may be in the space of a post-test right now. Post-test, protest, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we may be in the space of a post-test right now, now that we know better. Hopefully we won't be so easily swayed or taken advantage of, or we won't be so lackadaisical or hesitant to handle the things that need to be handled. And again, with that Four of Swords energy, and even with temperance, with the back of temperance, it's like we're, we may be treating it as something that will like work itself out in time, something that we don't necessarily need to show up for. And again, it's like that rolling the dice, taking your chances when you don't have to. Like there's a more surefire way to make sure that you get what you want out of the situation. Now, however, it's like it requires more from us. And again, it's not that the divine isn't assisting, but it's like if you already know what you need to do, then what does the divine have to do in that situation? The divine can't force you to do anything that you know you need to do. Okay, I'm going to get two one for over here i'm just gonna keep going until something comes in because i'm feeling it okay. and there is also i guess there's a question of accountability here and there's a question of owning up to our mistakes and owning up to the words that we said and the positions that we held rather than kind of sort of burying it, <laughs> rather than burying it and acting like it didn't happen and trying to move on fresh. It's like, uh, if you try to do that, it may not necessarily work out that well for you. It has to be corrected in some way. I don't know though, to each their own. Let's see, okay, can I get one of these now please? I'm going to keep going. If I'm on here all night, I'll be on here all night. That's not, well, I can't be on here all night because now I have a call to wake up for tomorrow. So. <laughs> Ooh, what was that? Broken heart and something. Okay, this side. Ha, 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 ha. 
Indecision. Oh my gosh, really? I'm so surprised. Maybe that's a sign that I don't even need this. It's like, yeah, but happy to clarify. <laughs> And again, I feel like it stems off of that Four of Swords. Like, better off just not even bringing it up, not talking about it, not handling it, not addressing it. Just got out of a Three of Swords situation and trying to come out of a Three of Swords situation, not looking for a fight. But it feels like there's an element of gravity there. And maybe it's coming through the energy of the world, the back of the world that was right here. And that element of gravity is like, without a certain element of finality, then the situation just keeps playing out. And so that five of swords that we don't really want to have to do, like maybe they'll just get the hint. Maybe it'll resolve itself. It's like, uh, maybe, maybe not. No. Ooh, the ice just melted and it made a noise. <laughs> Scorpio is king of uh, cups energy. And in some decks, the king of cups is like on, a, on an island of ice that's floating on the water. So there could be a little bit of pride. There could be a little bit of ego. Could be some trauma. Could be some, uh, some issues around vulnerability. And again, because of, oh, goodness. Y'all see all that? One second. Because of those issues uh, with vulnerability, it keeps us outside of spaces that we're welcomed in. And that's another thing about the Five uh, Pentacles is oftentimes it's shown as like um, some less, un less fortunate person outside of the church. But if they knock on the door, then they'll be welcomed with food and the fire, like a warm fire to cozy up to and to warm themselves with, not like being set on fire. <laughs> but they don't ask. And so they stay outside. Well, here's the door to personal healing and happiness where there was some indecision over here. Personal healing and happiness will get you a lot. It'll get you a lot. And personal healing and happiness will get you to ask for things when you need it. But it'll also get you to act when you need to as well. And it's about knowing when to do what. And again, it's that like an energy of melting ice, which gives increased flow. Also, I feel like there's an energy of dilution. But like the, the melted ice, it's like salty though, like too salty, right? It's like, it might be like a salt water fish, but if the water is too salty, then it's not great. So the melted ice It's like it, it goes in and it, it basically purifies the water or makes the water mer more pure by diluting the things, the contaminants within it. And if our experience, like if the past of the, if the past is the past and it's never going to go anywhere, then the only way to detoxify the entirety of our body of water is to add more fresh water, add more clean water. If you add enough clean water, then the things, the, the contaminants will be in such low concentration that it's like virtually not there. Now, of course, every now and then, maybe you'll hit a pocket of some concentrated contaminant or you'll be drinking water and like the, the third sip will be a little salty. But then if you keep drinking, like that was the only sip in the whole glass. Cause again, it doesn't really go anywhere, but you can dilute it to the point where it doesn't affect you as much. 
you can dilute it to the point where some freshwater fish can come into the space that was only saltwater fish. And if you want both fresh and saltwater fish in the same pond, then the saltwater fish will be concentrated where the salt is more concentrated in that pocket and the freshwater fish will be more concentrated where the salt isn't concentrated. If the salt just so happens to all stay together, I guess. And that's kind of sort of how we integrate our light and our dark in some ways. But it's like, that's the, like, we can't necessarily undo things that have already been done. And it isn't necessarily for us to, again, pre-test, post-test. If you score better on the post-test, you're rewarded for the things that you got right the second time. If you, like, it's a pre-test. They're not grading your pre-test. Like, you're, you're <laughs> assuming you may not know nothing. But by the post-test, you should know something. You should know a lot of something. You should pass the post-test. Pre-test, you can pass if you were already exposed to the material or whatever. But that one, it's not that the grade doesn't matter, but that's how they integrate improvement into the grading curve. So door to personal healing and happiness. And again, that's personal. So that comes from within. Next, ah, it's another angel. Second chakra archangel, Ariel. So there is some intimacy, right? I was talking about vulnerability or maybe some issues with it. You're still here. Okay, Zelda. I don't know when you sent that. <laughs> oh, not too long ago. All right. This is that openness that leads to the potential to create something new. You can't birth from a closed womb. Maybe you can do a C-section, but I guess the umbilical cord. You can't birth from a closed womb and a pinched umbil umbilical cord. Because if the umbilical cord is pinched, then it's like, I don't know, the baby doesn't get the nutrients that it needs to grow. And again, with that queen of wands at the bottom of the deck, the natural world is cooperating with our light. And it grows in the direction of light. Right? The things in the natural world need both light and dark. There's light cycles and dark cycles, but things always grow in the direction of the light. Because dark, you can get darkness anywhere. But light, you only get if you're facing it. And when the sun goes down, it's dark everywhere. But when the sun is up, it's only light where there is no shadow. Financial constraints is here. I feel like financial constraints, it's a lack of it feels like it's a lack of personal experience. So financial constraints comes in, I guess, in the middle. Because this is the point where either we turn around and we go back or we continue forward. And then here's that gambling energy, taking your bets or taking your chances with that five of pentacles when it can be a sure thing. Like if you go to the door, if you knock on the door, if you ask, it will be open unto you and you will receive. So it's like, why are you rolling dice outside the church? And you can literally just go knock on the door and be like, oh, food, shelter, warmth for free. Oh, wait. It's like, yeah, it's kind of sort of what we do. It's kind of sort of why we're here. But you have to ask. Like, eh, sometimes they'll go around and they'll hand people stuff. But if you're too proud and you don't take it, then it's like, I think sometimes we have like pride and ego and we want things in a certain way. But like when it's hand delivered to us sometimes, it's like we still refuse it. And it's like, okay, well, you didn't come when I invited you and you also refused it when I brought it to you. 
So I'm not sure how this is supposed to work. After this is the woman holding a coin, which is the resolution of all of those financial constraints. This is the creation of those things that were not. This is passing the post test. And then there's yin and yang, which is the balance that I was talking about between knowing when to receive or being, it's, it's that balance between being in a receptive state and an active state, the yin state and the yang state. You're in yin receptive when you need to be yin receptive, but you're in yang expressive in action when you need to be taking some action. And it's interesting because while the angel has its back turned on the lion, which I'm taking to be F, the eagle is still there. The eagle being the space of like the divine messenger and the eyes of the divine. So even though the divine, in some sense, you feel like has its back turned on you, maybe, or maybe you feel like the divine isn't watching. But the eagle is right there, like little staring dead at that lion, like right there. Also, there's a post from the hanged man in the back, but the hanged man is free. He's not there anymore, which is interesting because it was the hanged man, the back of the four of wands and the nine of swords here. So just like pass the post test. I don't know. <laughs> like we, we already know what to do better this time. Bottom of the deck is the world. Now upright. Now we can close this chapter that was sort of still open before. But it's that, it's, again, it's that finality. Because without it, with this indecision here, it's like it sucks us back into it. And it comes in the space of these financial constraints, I feel like, halfway there. It's like not having the experiences, not knowing how it's going to work out, not having anything to validate what it is that you feel called to do and what you know you should do. Like first time High Priestess was in reverse. Every, like everything that was showing its back, like we didn't listen when we knew what to do. Maybe we listened to our, we followed whatever was convenient or easiest. But now we know better. There's an opportunity to actually bridge gaps and to come into new spaces. And it's not going to take as long as we think it's going to take because we know better. <laughs> because we took the pretest. So, uh, it's like with the knowledge of the pretest, together with the everything that we've learned, again, we should do better on the post test. We've already seen what it could be. And we don't have to choose that. It eliminates a lot of the indecision for us. It can eliminate a lot of the hesitance for us. It can actually embolden us and encourage us and empower us to do the things that we know we need to do now because we've had that experience of not doing it before, because we've seen how that played out. And again, you know, some people will choose to continue gambling and other people will take the sure thing. And the sure thing pays out more than what you would have gambled for at the end of it less than you would have paid it's like a lot of times when we gamble like we think it'll be easy and it doesn't necessarily start off easy but it definitely gets infinitely easier moving forward like i feel like some of the most difficult things that i've had to do in the past few months if not month well yeah past few months month and a half have been some of the easiest things I've done because of all the growth and the healing that happened. Honestly, I'm like, whoa! Like if that, if all of that didn't happen, I would have been freaking out and self sabotaging this right now. Even right now, there are things that I don't know. 
but I don't know. It's like I know it'll work out. I know I don't have to worry about it or freak out over it. I know it can work out a lot better than what I think is going to work out. <laughs> Apparently, it can be a lot easier than what I thought. <laughs> I just have to do the things that I need to do, show up and be present. I'm like, okay, I can do that. It's like the divine kind of sort of really does do the hard part. A lot of times, the heaviest lifting, but it does require us to do you know, our part. Now, on our part, there are hard parts, and that has hard parts to our part. So it's not that it's going to be necessarily without challenge or difficulty. So now it's going to be time for the final messages. Look, really, should have read the book more. That's why I pull these out. <laughs> but that's oh, title card. Okay, let's see. I'm going to get the final card from this one first. Let's do it this way. I like this surprise. Well, if I do it this way, it'll probably come out face up. So let's see. And also with that pretest post test, it's like at the same time, it's one of those proficiency tests. So if you do well enough on the pretest, then it's like you skip out on that chapter, on that section, on that class, on that lesson, because you already know everything that you would have gained from that in the first time. So it's like it's short circuits and it shortcuts a lot of things at the same time. And that can be another reason why, you know, sometimes it ain't that things are necessarily easy, 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 smooth sailing, because you just, you prove that you're proficient enough to move on to the next thing. And again, that's what a lot of, last year gave us the opportunity to do, to prove our proficiency and to kind of move up a level. Those who navigate out of the forest before the fog rises will find themselves in a space of mastery. I said that in like March, maybe, I don't know. But again, you know, everything is understandable. It was dark, you know? And not only was it dark, it was also foggy. So whatever light there would have been from like a full moon or whatever, was scattered by the fog. I it turns out I had cataract. <laughs> so I know what good cleaning the lens um, so that light can gather does. Because when it's scattered, it makes it nearly impossible to see really far. And it's like a lot of people are in or we're in this it's like a hermity death energy. Like there is hermit energy, but there's also significant transformation happening. But if we can remove the fog in our own right, then what light we do get can collect to the point where we actually see a clearer picture. Uh, ah. Oh, this is a lot. But it came out with the temple path. I'm just going to take the temple path. <laughs> I'm just going to take the temple path. Bottom of the deck is fifth chakra, Archangel Gabriel. Throat chakra, it's all about speaking. Again, I feel like there can be an element of... Um, there can be an element of compat compatibility. There can be an element of accountability here. Because it's like we should speak just as loudly when we're, when we know that we were wrong, right? It's like sometimes we'll be so loud about certain things. We'll find out that we're wrong. And then it's like, we try to minimize, clean up or sweep under the rug, the things that we said in the past and just try to move on from it. And you can do that, but for any kind of sovereign, anything, any kind of ruler, there needs to be an element of accountability. And if you can't be accountable for the things you do and say, how are you supposed to be like deemed worthy to be accountable for anything like outside of that? It's like, if you can barely take care of yourself, probably shouldn't get a pet or a child 
probably shouldn't invite another life into your experience when you can barely maintain your own. And like having a pet or a child to teach you responsibility. It's like, uh, maybe not. <laughs> I mean, I guess like I understand because when you have to do something, that's when you do it. So it, it can mature you and make you more responsible through sheer virtue of now you have to do it because something's dependent on you. But I don't know. I think there's a lot of stigma, not stigma necessarily, but like nobody wants to be wrong. Man, it's like pre-test, post-test. Because in you talking about discussing, bringing to light where you, the things that you are now course correcting from, it brings a light to it that maybe someone else will also understand or a point that they will also see. And it's also still to keep in mind that everyone has their own journey. And it's like two people can be in a similar space, but for very different reasons, with very different purposes, and with different backgrounds, and with different approaches. But the temple path is here. All things as they should be. That's what Temple Path says to me. All things as they should be. And as soon as you decide to ascend the steps instead of walking around the temple to find an easier way up, the quicker you get to uh, your angle. Probably to that place where you want to be. And again, you know, we're human. Times get hard, uncertain, dark, rough, and tough. But we always have the choice to do more, be more. To rise to the occasion, rise. To the you don't have to, but you know. pre-test, post-test. That's what I'm going to title this: pre-test, post-test. All right. Final message from the vice versa. I think this is hunger. Question mark. Am I even hungry? Am I thirsty? I'm probably thirsty. I tried to get some water from the store, and there was no water. <laughs> My brother was like, we can go to the other store if you need some water. I was like, I still got some water at home. So when I'm out of water and I go to the store, there will be water. And there's like other water here. So also at the same time, it's like, mm. all right, final message from the vice versa. Like one or two cards would be choice. I'll read it. Whatever card comes out, I'm going to read it. If it's like one or two cards, I'm not reading like five. Like from the book. I'll take five cards, but I'm not reading five cards from the book, is what I'm trying to say. What if a card flips over though? Now it's got to hit the table. Oh, cute. Who this? The Four of Cups? Oh, it's the front of the Four of Cups this time. Now, the difference between the front and the back of the Four of Cups is on the back, the ship's already sailed. We see it off in the horizon. Or at least we think the ship is sailed. Is it our ship? Was it our ship? Maybe. But in the front, you know, it's just kind of sort of... We're waiting there a little bit. These cups are dusty, dirty, look sandy. But there's some like grass growing in the sand. There's like a tree in the sand or something. And a person sitting with their back to the tree, looking at the cups. There's this feeling. It's like the person feels rooted, but they're not. Like, I feel like there's this energy here that feels like it, it's grown roots in whatever situation and space it's in. So it's looking at these four cups as if, like, they're things that this person will never have. But, like, there are no roots. Like, that person could just, 
like stand up and go over there. That person isn't a tree. This person can move. Hello? And look, there's the six of swords. <laughs> there's the six of swords. Bottom is the back of justice. There's a butterfly here, a sword here. Whatever the, we see, the scales look like the scales then broke. Scales is on the ground. I think that's Bastet on the back of the throne. I don't remember. Um, oh, I said I would read, so I'll read it. Yeah. Let's see. Let me put this back this way. Oh, there's the hangman and justice. So. This side, carved into the back of the throne of justice, is an image of Amit. Psych! That is not that. Step. Is an image of Amit, the demon who awaits the heavy hearted dead. Ooh. Amit has the head of a crocodile, the forepaws of a lion, and the hindquarters of a hippopotamus. Three ferocious animals who are unstoppable in combination. Like Ma'at, Amit is fair and just. She only devours those whose hearts has determined that outcome. And yet, something has gone wrong. The scales of justice have been thrown down and broken, and the sword of truth is trapped and overgrown. Without truth and justice, Amit is free to devour whom she chooses, regardless of their guilt or innocence. Do not ever think that you can sneak around justice. You may get away with it for a time, but inevitably, the truth will out. It is far better to face it of your own free will than to wait and let justice choose her time to cast the verdict. The situation is fragile and fraught with danger. I don't wait. That reminds me of like a Pokemon song. <laughs> but don't let it get to, the to your head, young trainer. The road is long and filled with danger. Everyone thinks they deserve to be number one. But who can't stop you? The answer is no. I don't know. That song was actually lit. I'm going to listen to it. <laughs> there are a few Pokemon intro songs that I absolutely love. So what was supposed to be Justin Fair has not been for a long time. But justice is going to come. So I guess this could be someone waiting on the scales to be picked up again, waiting for things to turn up right. Someone who feels cheated in a situation, potentially, looking at these four cups. But I don't, it's like, I wouldn't necessarily feel cheated about anything at the Four of Cups. Maybe if it were like the Nine of Cups or the Ten of Cups, sure. But if, like, if it's only Four of Cups, it's like, okay. And there are like dirty and sandy. Like you can do better. You do better with one cup. Anyway. Now my aunt is the one who I think on behalf of Anubis weighs the hearts of the of the dead against the feather. And if it's as light as or lighter than a feather, then you go to the good place. If it's heavier than a feather, then I guess um, it comes into balance. You. <laughs> also, there's an energy of like a resignation speech or something like that. It's like, with a heavy heart, I announce that blah, 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 blah. Again, maybe somebody thought that they were gonna get away with something, but when you least expect it, justice comes and picks up the scales. But that's the thing about justice. And that's the thing about, I guess, humanity, you know? We get greedy. And if we get away with something one time, we think we can get away with it two times, three times, four times. Then it becomes a new pattern. Then it becomes a new habit. 
And when justice finally comes back, she has a record of every transgression and she charges you for it. You know, they deliberate on each and every one. That's universal witness that lives inside of us. That's that spark of God that's always watching. When you know better, and you know you know better, but you choose to do whatever else anyway. It doesn't matter how long you got away with it. And that's one thing that I never understood, really. Um, like, we had this one teacher who had a rule, like, no eating in the class. And people would eat in the class, and then sometimes he would decide to, like, enforce it. And they'd be like, well, I was eating all those other days, and you never said nothing. And they say that as if that's some justification for them being able to eat in the classroom when they know that they shouldn't have been eating in the classroom that whole time. It's like, it doesn't matter if you get caught or if you get punished or not. Like, you know, you're not supposed to be doing it when you're doing it. And it's like, how upset can you be when eventually it catches up to you? I guess you should be glad you got away with it for as long as you did. Or maybe... It's like, well, if I wasn't getting away with it for as long as I was, then things would have, wouldn't have escalated to the point where they escalated when you tried to charge me. It's like, I would have stopped at stealing candy bars if you would have stopped me from stealing, for stealing candy bars before I started stealing cards and identities and all kinds of stuff. And it's like, okay, but like, it's always been wrong and you always knew that. Just because someone wasn't there in that time and moment, just because you got away with it one time or two times, one time or two times, doesn't mean you're going to continue to get away with it. But again, because we're humans and we get greedy, it's like the the scale gets larger and larger and larger. But eventually, at some point, we're going to have to pay for it. And what some energies will do is they will kind of sort of like set you up. You'll get away with it. You'll get bolder. Do more and more and more and more. And then when you've racked up the bill higher than you can pay because the money that you still you spend, then they want to come for you. And that's how they make bank. It's like <laughs> loan sharks and uh, students like Sally Mae. <laughs> it's like they are credit card companies in general or whatever. They give it to you and they wait until you rack it up beyond what you can pay. Because when you get to that point beyond what you can pay, that's when interest really starts to compile. Because if you can pay it off, no problem. Then it's like, okay, well, there's all the money that we're not going to make with interest. But when you can't pay it off, that's when it really accrues. And it accrues at a rate faster than you have the means to sort of account for and accommodate for. That's why you just don't do it the first time. Or you just do it right the first time. Or that's why I would just not do it. Because it, it seems to be the case every time it started off petty and then started off in petty crimes and now it's Grand Theft Auto. But the top of the deck was the Six of Swords. Remember how I said that you'd be better off with one cup rather than like these four dusty, dirty in the sand cups? On the other side of the Six of Swords, she has that one cup. And she's moving forward. But we don't see you. You didn't see that. <laughs> Unsee that. Man. I'm letting you know. If you move, you're already better off. And the Knight of Pentacles, who did? Yeah, the Knight of Pentacles is here. Ooh, that Knight of Pentacles is dusty. Well, I guess the other side ain't that much better either. With the lovers behind that. But now it's the front side of the lovers. Uh, oh my gosh, that's so cute. It's like there's the tree of life in the burning bush. Oh, look at the horns on this thing. I feel like he should be riding a moose. Um, Six of Swords is when we trust the ferryman to get us where we need to go. The ferryman has a knowledge that we don't have. And a lot of times from a space of limited knowledge and awareness, we like to dictate our course. But it's like, girl, like you don't even know that like literally two seconds after we go down that path, it's rapids 
filled with jagged rocks where we'd have no control over the boat. Maybe we would make it through the rocks without the boat being dashed to bits. But like right after the like the rapids lead to a drop off. Maybe we would survive the drop off, but if we go down this other path, we don't have to take our chances. Again, it's like we can gamble or we can take this sure thing. Just tr trust the ferryman and move. Like whatever this, like I feel like there's a lot less tying us here than we think. And nothing, it's like nothing would grow here anyway. But again, I feel like it's sometimes as humans, it's another one of those human things. Sometimes it's like we fantasize about something for so long or we want something so bad that even when we get it and it doesn't fulfill us at all, or even when it isn't what we thought it was, then it's like we stay there anymore. It's like if it ain't right, then hey, like move on. It's like we haven't missed anything yet, but we will if we don't move. Whatever it is that we're wanting, it's like it won't find us in the space and the place that we're at. But things are already moving. Like justice has already picked up that scale. Maybe it hasn't started necessarily playing out. Excuse me, the physical yet, but the energy of justice is very much uh, awake and here and observing. Now, there may potentially be like some kind of amnesty policy or a period of forgiveness. Because when we don't know any better, we don't know any better. If you knew better, you knew better. You, it's like you can feign ignorance all you want to but you knew it was wrong when you were doing it like it doesn't matter if it was like you were mad you were whatever vengeance retribution whatever it doesn't matter you knew it was bad you knew it was wrong you should have done it now again I feel like there may be a little bit of amnesty some, some forgiveness it's like oh you know that was the energy those were the times a lot of people were doing it everyone does it in America <laughs> Okay, but moving forward, <laughs> what did he say? He was like, he was like, act, he was like, act right or I'll break your neck or something like that. <laughs> That's my favorite part of the movie. <laughs> he was like, no, act right or I'll break your neck. Um, and he knew like everything that all of the shenanigans that were happening in the past. That it's like it was in the past. There is an energy of a clean ish slate because things were what they were. Now, for some things, it may be, like for some transgressions, they may be sort of less overlookable than others, especially depending on how we influence and impact the lives of other people, I guess. Um, but, I mean, I don't know. I'm one person, right? Justice is like a cosmic energy or a divine energy. I just feel like maybe it won't be as strict and as harsh as it could be. But I think also at the same time, it's that like pre-test, post-test energy. So we're not necessarily, like not everyone is going to pass the pre-test because not everyone comes in with knowledge and awareness. But after a certain point, when the teaching begins, that's when we're responsible for knowing. So anyway, this is what I got. I hope you have a good whatever whenever you see this. I hope you're acting in alignment to make it better, to make it the best it can possibly be. Because for those who believe in and act in accordance to and align with, better and miraculous things, better and miraculous things are possible and not only possible, but happening already continuously. Sometimes in ways that you may not expect. <laughs> I had that happen a few times. <laughs> but when they revealed themselves to me, it was like, wow, did they reveal themselves? Like, 
But for everything that I was doing, everything that I was putting, like I was kept last year. I was kept. I, I like I didn't struggle too much, thankfully. And you know, I was very intentional about a lot of stuff. So I mean, y'all have seen me on here. And I've talked about a lot of it already, but it's like what I really thought were setbacks in the moment ended up unfolding into the most wonderful safety net. Because I don't know what I would have done had I not had those resources. But I'm glad that in the moment that I was led to do those things, I did it. And I, like, let me be a little more upfront and honest with y'all. Um, I'm pretty stubborn. And so sometimes the divine got to tell me stuff like multiple times. Like I don't do a lot of, I don't do pretty much anything for singular reasoning. That's something that I need to work on. Um, that I have worked on, if I think about it. I used to be the type of person not to do anything for singular reasoning. Meaning like if I was going to do something, I needed multiple reasons to do it. If I needed, like if there was something I had to start, I needed to hear it multiple times before I started it. Now, the more I went through the year, and like I said, I procrastinate a lot less now. I just do stuff, right? Like I got all my references and stuff like that sent off today. I could have waited until like tomorrow morning to do it. I was like, no, I'll get, I'll get on this immediately. And I'm glad I did because, you know, when you're working with other people, you never know <laughs> when they're going to reply and respond. Anyway, like that, that was definitely me. But again, it, it came that point in time when it was like, okay, I can't be like that anymore, especially with some things I need to just do it when I feel guided to do it. And I'm glad I did because it, it positions and it still unfolds better. Like I said at the beginning of this, I felt led to do something that I had bookmarked and I was just like, I woke up today, not, not today, the other day. I was like, I'm going to do it. I'll just do it today. And I ended up doing a few more than I planned to. I was only going to do one, but I did a few of them across the few things off of my to-do list. And now here today, I get a random phone call in the middle of the day with an opportunity. Well, that can lead to opportunities. Opportunities that I have a say in. So you know, that's cute. Again, that's why we shouldn't be so attached and tied to how things sort of physically play out in that time and space. We should keep our eye on what's higher. And at the same time, the things that I am manifesting and believing for the collective as a whole, I still hold on to. I don't let uh the physical like how things are playing out sort of swayed or dissuade or determine how i believe the things that i already believe and a lot of people not a lot of people because you know we all believe different things a lot of us believe different things and so some people will see something and be like oh see i told y'all or it was like oh see see this is what i was talking about but it's like this it ain't over And all it does is it positions us, it aligns us even more stronger to that brighter possibility. A moment of temporary darkness now forces even more eyes open. People who didn't see it before, and that's that's been like the all basically the whole year. It's like these this continuous series of realizations and awakenings for people. If you didn't see it before, you're going to see it now. If you didn't see it then, you'll see it now. If you didn't see it then, you'll see it now. And again, it just aligns us more and more and more, gets more and more people on the page of progression and moving forward and coming more into our higher potential rather than stalling out here or where we were. Oh, that's, that's one thing that last year really trained me to do is to keep my eyes trained on something above how things play out physically. And it's something that, you know, I was raised in the church. And so it's, it's, it's ideas and things that I've been exposed to all my life. 
But one of the things I realized maybe last year, I think it was last year, that like faith is one of my like generational gifts. I've inherited a strong sense of faith from my mother and her mother. And I'm sure it goes back on both sides of that family. And that the only piece I was missing for the longest time was the work. The piece I was missing was the actually doing stuff piece. And so it's like, sometimes things wouldn't necessarily happen or sometimes I would like not take the opportunities that I had manifested because of all of the things that it brought up with myself. But yeah, I don't know. I think that's something that we don't necessarily, I think we talk about it sometimes, but sometimes I think we overly emphasize like generational curses and these generational pitfalls are like, you know, my parent did this and their parent was like that and their parent. And so now that's why we are or whatever. But there are also potentially good things there too. I don't know. I talked more than I thought I would. I'll catch y'all later whenever I catch y'all. Bye for when I'm here. Because when things start to take off, honestly, I don't know where I'm going to be. And I don't necessarily feel a huge obligation to this platform. Because again, I feel like everything that I could say, I've already said. I feel like I've been more or less saying the same things for a minute now. But again, it's like, you know, I don't know. Some things are new, right? I don't know. <laughs> All right, bye. <laughs>